My name is Ms. Wainoga. Welcome to Elimu TV. We are looking at Form 2 work. In Form 2, we have a number of topics to cover. We have about six topics to cover. We start always with structure of an atom in the periodic table in Chapter 1. Chapter 2, we go to chemical families, patterns and their properties. Three, we look at structure and bonding. Four, we look at salts. Five, we look at the effect of an electric current on substances. And six, we look at carbon and its compounds. Our subtopic number one, we are going to start or we are going to learn today the structure of an atom and the periodic table. So the objectives of this topic as we go through it, we need to know a number of things as we start on it. So the objectives. So structure of an atom in the periodic table. That will be our first topic. In our first topic, we need to know what objectives, what objectives we need to achieve by the end of our topic or by the end of our lessons. So number one, we are going to look at the structure of an atom or describe describe the structure describe the structure of an atom objective number 2 will be after we have described the structure of an atom we need to know what are the components of the structure of the atom so composition of an atom. On the atom also, we need to describe or define a number of terms. We need to know what we mean by atomic number. We also need to define the atomic mass and we need to define also what an isotope what an isotope is number four objective number four we are going to look at also the electronic configuration objective number four we look at the electronic configuration configuration of the various atoms or the various atoms that we are going to learn from the periodic table. We'll also, number five, we'll also define what we mean by valency in various elements. We'll also look at the oxidation, the oxidation numbers in the various elements. And from the oxidation number and the valence, we are going to look at whether we are in a position to draw the structure of an atom and indicate their valences or from their valences or oxidation numbers. We are also going to derive a lot of formulas from the valences and the oxidation number. Deriving formula of the compounds, the compounds learned in chemistry. And finally, number seven, we also need to have understood or be in a position to write, to write word and chemical and 
chemical equations, which should be written and be well balanced depending on the valences that we will have learned from the topic. So in total, uh, that is simply what we'll be learning about in the structure of the atom. And is one that I have forgotten, number nine, we should also be in a position to draw. Number nine, we should be in a position to draw and indicate all the elements, the first 20 elements, the first 20 elements, the first 20 elements on the periodic table. So in general, all those objectives by the end of the lesson, we should be in a position to take care of all those points that we are talking about. Therefore, from there, we look at the structure of an atom. Before we look at what a structure of an atom is, we need to know what is actually this atom that we are talking about. So what is an atom? An atom we learned back in our Form 1 class that it is the, sim the smallest particle of an element that takes part in a chemical reaction. Atoms simply make up matter or it is a part of matter and therefore it is one of those very small particles that are involved in a chemical reaction. An atom is made up of other smaller particles and the smaller particles we usually call them the sub atomic the sub atomic particles. the subatomic particles. The subatomic particles are usually three. They involve, number one, we have protons. Number two, we have electrons. And number three, we have neutrons. We have neutrons. The protons always in chemistry are denoted with a small p like that. The electrons will always be denoted with a small e like that. And the neutrons will always be denoted with a small n like that. So those are the subatomic particles that usually make up the structure of an atom. Therefore, the atom simply, how would we represent it diagrammatically in form of a diagram involving all the subatomic particles in it? How does it appear? The structure of the atom is made up of two regions. We have one, a region which we are calling the nucleus, and two, a region which is, which is region occupied a region, region occupied by electrons. Diagrammatically, we can represent the structure of an atom this way. The innermost part is what we are calling the nucleus, and we have an outermost region and the outermost region is simply a region which we call the shells. So the shells simply are to the outside and we have the inner region which we call the nucleus. The nucleus comprises of protons and neutrons. So the nuclear has always an occupation of the protons and the neutrons. The outer region is occupied by electrons. The electrons are usually to the outer side of the nucleus that is in an atom. These ones to the outside is where we have the flow of the electrons. We call them the shells of an atom. 
This one we are calling it the nucleus. We call it the nucleus of an atom. And this one in between there we have a space. In most cases we call it an empty, an empty space in there. So that is how an atom looks like. From there let's see what exactly are the protons, what exactly are the neutrons, and what exactly are the electrons. We start with the protons. The protons simply are particles that are found in the nucleus. The protons are always positively, they are always positively They are always positively charged. They are always positively charged particles in an atom. Number two, the protons usually are found inside the nucleus. So always their position is in the nucleus. They are always found in the nucleus. And number three, the protons have a relative, they have a relative mass of one. They have a relative mass of one. So those are the proton particles that we have in an atom. We go to number two, the electrons. The electrons. Electrons are also found in an atom and we usually say or we talk of them being negatively they are negatively charged they are negatively charged particles that are found in the structure of an atom number two they are located they are located on the shells they are located on the shells of the atom. Number three, they have a relative mass of almost zero. Relative mass of almost, relative mass of almost zero. So those are electrons that are found in an atom. And three, we have the neutrons. Neutrons, what are they? So neutrons, they are also located, they are located in the nucleus. They are located in the nucleus of an atom. Number two, they possess no charge. They have no charge. So the other two, that is, the protons, they are positively charged, the electrons are negatively charged, but the neutrons, they possess no charge. What about the mass of the neutrons? The neutrons have a mass of one. They have a relative mass of one. So just like the protons, they have a relative mass of one and also the neutrons have a relative mass of one. Remember what you've said earlier, that the protons and the neutrons are both found in the nucleus and the electrons are found on the shells of a atom. Therefore, from there, let's see. Let's look at their positioning. So if I am to draw the structure of an atom, I will have my protons in there, I will have my neutrons there. If I am to indicate the electrons, they will appear there on the shells, as we have said there before or as I have introduced it there. From there, let's see a summary table that is going to give us the characteristics of all the three particles that are found in an atom. If we are to represent them in a summary form, we can have the subatomic particles.
We can also have the real, their relative masses. Their relative masses. And we can also have their electrical, their electrical charges. So the first subatomic particle that we have looked at is the proton. We have said it has a relative mass of one and the charge of it, we have said it is positively charged. Number two, we have looked at the neutron. The neutron has a relative mass also of one but it has no charges. So we usually say that it is neutral. Neutral or we can talk of it having a charge of zero. And then the electrons, the electrons, we have said that they have a negligible mark. Mm -hmm. So I mean a negligible mass, sorry. Therefore we can talk of its mass being one over 1840. This is a relative mass to some of the standard atoms that we usually have in the lab. And then the electrical charge of it, we have said that it is negatively charged. So that is a summary table that gives us the particles that are found in an atom and the way they are represented with their masses and their charges. Okay, from there, we can have a definition of what we are going to call an atomic number and what we'll call the mass number. So, what is an atomic, what is an atomic number? So, an atomic number is always the total number of protons that are found in an atom. So atomic number will be equals to the total number of protons that are found in the atom or the structure of the atom, which is also usually equal to the total number of electrons, the total number of electrons that are found in an atom. We also have another term that we can define that is mass number mass number still from the structure of our atom that we have the mass number is always the total number of protons total protons total protons plus the total neutrons the total neutrons that are found in the nucleus of an atom. So a combination of both protons and neutrons give us the mass number. A combination or the total number of protons which is equals to the number of electrons in an atom give us what we call an atomic number. So those are two terms that are very important for us to understand as we look at the structure of our atom. In our next lesson, we are going to look at the atomic number once again, the mass number, and we see how we are going to relate them or to work them out using a number of examples or a number of figures. We are also going to see how we represent them in form of symbols and how we can be able to carry out some calculations on them to determine the number of protons or the number of electrons or the neutrons in an atom. So before we come to the end of our lesson, we need to have an assignment that is going to help us to simply go through what we have just learned. It will give us a summary of what we have learned. So I want you to redefine what we mean by an atom. Tell us also the particles that are found in an atom and tell us also how we have the subatomic particles and the way they are represented in an atom. So draw that one also too. That one will help us to have a summary of the lesson so that from where we start in our next lesson, we can have a follow-up or a catch-up of the next 
of the next knowledge on this topic.